These four games, made within the space of a month by the same developer, cost just about $50 each. I've just played them, and uh, I think it's safe to say that these may just actually be the worst games on Steam. I mean, they're uninspired, lazy, and engineered to trick people into buying them on sale with what I assume to be fake slash ironic for the sake of being ironic reviews. I was curious, of course, saw they had a 95% off bundle for £6.60, about this much in American, and you know what? Even that's asking for too much, because today we're diving deeper than ever in this dumpster known as Steam. So let's take a look at this first game called School Trip, where the story is that we've survived a bus crash and we need to find a way back to school. Apparently this game has about four features, which are jumping, running, carry things and cool music. So I guess this game is going for more of a minimalistic approach, which is evident on their title screen because uh, th there's not really much here. I mean, you can see the bus in the background on fire. The only two buttons are play and quit. So unfortunately, we won't be exploring any settings for this game. Anyway, let's press play and uh, here's my here's my first impression. No way. No way. <laughs> Get this. My, my cursor's not even logged in and I can't even... Okay, I can look around. There's no sound. There is nothing. There's nothing. Hang on. I've got sound on my PC. There is no sound here. I'm hurting. I need find help. That bus crash was insane. Oh, what, you mean the one over there? Oh, yeah, I guess we saw it at the title screen. Maybe we should go over there. That's interesting. I can kind of see the, uh... This is... This is... I feel nauseous playing this game. Okay, I can't go back there because there's an invisible wall, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is I, I, I can see the stuff through the, the grass. Right, well, that's a powerful start. By the way, upon further inspection, there is actually cool music in this game. It's just insanely quiet, and the only reason why you're going to hear it in this video is because I had to do the job for them. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and try and explain the logic of this game, but I will say this. We've just survived a bus crash. You can see it over there. The police have also already arrived, and we're injured. So, of course, to find refuge, we need to go into this dark cave. Now, before going into this dark cave, I thought, well, maybe this is where the jumping comes into play. Maybe there would be some kind of parkour challenge or uh, even a puzzle. No, uh, it, it just takes us into the woods and there's no path, no direction. And by the way, you can jump in this game, but to do so, you need to double tap spacebar. And you know what? I'm going to leave it to you to find the one moment in this game where you need to jump. Anyway, even with the slow sprinting speed with the, uh, the camera going all over the place, it didn't actually take too long to find something or should I say someone. Very, uh, very strange looking person. Look at the schnoz on this guy. Look at the beer belly. That is, that is quite difficult to achieve. Look at the spikes coming out of his arm. Hello, my name is Winston. I can help you if you help me. I need you to find my gasoline. I think the gasoline is on the cargo in the forest. I can walk through this NPC and just kind of get a POV of what it's like to be Winston. It's depressing. Uh, anything in the car? No. I need to find the cargo, which is probably over near the truck. But can I jump? I, I, no, I probably can't go into this building, can I? Eventually, we'll make it. Eventually, we'll make it to this container, which I thought was a truck, but it, it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a container. Yay. And uh, there is something on it. Need a key to open. It'll be hilarious, right? If the key was just somewhere in the forest, like behind a rock, just somewhere like over there. If the key was over there, that would be amazing. Well, I can tell you it's not over here. It's not over here either. I even checked Winston's little home. Couldn't find anything. No, I was walking around for a good 10 minutes trying to figure out where, where should I go? Where do I find this key? Was it over there? Was it over here? I, I don't know. Where do I go? Where do I find this key? But you see, Winston's a helpful man. He's a nice fellow with pointy shoulders and a big nose. But poor old Winston can be a bit forgetful sometimes. And you know what? So am I. I, I forget things sometimes. Even the dialogue we just had. So I went back over to Winston and it turns out there's a change of plans. Does Winston tell me anything else? Okay, so now he tells me. He says, oh, you need a key for the cargo. I think I dropped the key on the other side of the forest. The key is in front of a rock. That is all I remember. A rock. Which one? I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> I've got gameplay. It's gameplay. Always look at the reviews. Always think to yourself. I mean, actually, do you know what? 
yeah, nah. It, it, is it worth the price? Uh, it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely not this rock. This rock will have the key. Why? Because it's next to the cargo. Realistically, why would he go to any other rock? Maybe that one over there. I, I, maybe I've already seen it. Always look at the reviews. Always think to yourself, is it worth the price? It's not near this rock. No. It'll be hilarious, right? If the key was just somewhere in the forest. I don't... I, I, I I've, I've picked the wrong... I, my career choice has not been... Is it worth the price? I'm pretty damn sure I, I've explored all of the, uh, the rocks. That looks like a rock. Can't see a key near this rock. Finally, that's the key. That right there is the key. At least it's easy to see, but this was the rock. How do I pick it up? Okay, I just walk into it. Brilliant. Sorry for the whole horror segment. Uh, this basically drove me insane. I mean, I checked every rock before finding the key at this one. Anyway, with the key, we can now open the container and pick up the fuel for Winston's truck. This is where that uh, carry feature comes into play. And this is the only time we'll be carrying something. As you know, hang on. We do, in fact, carry something else, but uh, we'll see that in a bit. Now, once we've given Winston the fuel, he gives us a med pack so we can patch ourselves up and kindly offers to drive us to school. But there's a bit more to it than that. I can get you there, but first we need to stop at the gas station to refuel the car. Fuel. Okay, Winston. What's gonna happen, man? Where are we now, Winston? Where are we now? There's an axe. What am I gonna... Just wanna con... Okay. We've now confirmed that I'm a, I'm a child, okay? We've not gone with the police. We've just decided to go with some random dude. In the middle of nowhere. Uh, he said we need to go to the gas station. Okay. And the objective now is chop a tree. Oh no. I have an axe in my car. You need to chop the trees down with the axe. Why, Winston? Why do I need to do this? What? Okay, let's just... Let's just chop... Do I need to chop every tree down? How do I... Uh, chop a tree. I'm chopping one. Winston, I'm chopping the tree. How do I chop the tree? I've done it. I've I've chopped the tree. Oh, it's this one. Okay. Okay, now this makes sense. I, I feel I feel like an idiot. Uh, this by the way, this is how you chop a tree. You just There we go. We've done it. Good job. Now we can go. Brilliant. Gameplay. Now we're at the gas station. Not gonna lie, this place looks pretty cool. But what do we need to do, Winston? Oh no, I don't have any cash. Can you go find an ATM and grab some cash, then fill up the car? I'm supposed to be a child. I mean, I'm pretty big for a child. I'm, I'm very tall for a child. I've got so many questions. Now, I can't go in this direction because it's blocked off. Uh, all of the cars have stopped. There are no people left in this town or this world. This is... Th honestly, this just looks like uh, I I'm in a weird apocalyptic landscape and the only person that seems to be alive and breathing is winston and there we go there's the atm i think i've activated i i, I don't i don't know i think you just got to walk into it now gotta fill up the car learning some great life skills here this is exactly what would happen if i found a stranger in the woods on my way to school right, fill up the car okay cool I, I i now need to talk to winston again good job now we can get you to school brilliant let's go to the car I was worried for a second, Winston. I'm not gonna lie, man. I was very worried you didn't take me to school, but uh, thank you very much. I think it's goodbye now. You can visit me if you want. You know where I live. I don't think I will, Winston. Honestly, I don't think I trust you. I, I feel like it would be a very bad idea, but let's see what the hell school is all about. Oh, I can't... I, honestly, I can't wait to see what the next level is. I, I wonder what it is. Let's, uh... Oh. Wow, look at that. We got ourselves an achievement. Finished the game. The only achievement, by the way. And it just says, thanks for playing. Press any button to continue. What does continue do? Takes me back here. By the way, that was the only music in the whole game. That was the only sound of music. Can I even, can I even quit this game properly? I can't even quit the game properly. Well, that was basically it. You could speed run this game in about 10 minutes. To be honest, I'd still feel ripped off if this game was for free. But at least the next game has a bit more to it. This is a mega zombie explosion and the explosion will definitely blow you away. It is extremely loud. At least we've got options. Audio. Master volume.
One slider for all audio. You know, I'm just going to put it down. Did I break the audio? What's it? <laughs> Normal potato. All right, brilliant. Desert town. Let's, let's pick that. Oh, oh, okay. It's very high sensitivity. I can change the GPI on my mouse, right? I, I, I can do that, but it, it doesn't do anything. At least in this game, uh, I can see myself. I can see my character. It's very high sensitivity. I can run around properly. Uh, apparently, I only have a few seconds, though. Oh, no, no. Oh, God, the zombies are here. How do I inspect? You didn't give me any controls. Did I... <laughs> okay. Right. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to take all the guns because that seems like the the best thing to do. Um, press one. No. Two. Three. Okay, cool. Now I can shoot. It is ugly. Whoa, 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 whoa. My god. Okay, there is a lot of them. They run r really fast. I, I got... I've just got to run. Uh, what? What? What is going on? Can they not get me from here? No way. Are you kidding me? So they've just got... I'm speechless. I'm pretty sure this was intentional. I mean, there's a bloody gun inside the wall. Either that, or it was meant to be some kind of attempt at a uh, Easter egg. This wasn't an isolated incident either. In fact, I wasn't too sure which wall had collision and which one didn't. But regardless of this, I did go around to explore the map a little bit. I jumped over this wall here thinking that I made it out of bounds, but uh, no, we'll see that soon. Don't you worry, we'll see a lot of out of bounds soon. But there's not much here besides killing more of these glowing zombies and uh, this out of place, untextured staircase. I don't know what they've got against staircases in this game, but personally, I love them. Anyway, if you thought that was bad, wait until you see the next level because somehow it's even worse. Uh, I can see my character just by pressing escape. At least I can change the uh, the volume. They, they did think about that. That's very nice of them. Wait a minute. Check this out. Fire camp and shelter. Which I can just drag around. Who, 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 who? Okay, come on. Uh, run, run, change weapon, change, change the gun. Okay, how do I change gun? What button is it to change this gun? They're just, okay, I've got to put it here, right? This right now, these frames are the same frames I'm seeing. It just keeps spawning in zombies. And this has no recoil on it, by the way, so let's just, let's just have fun, I guess. Yeah, that's how an AK works. Can I can I just run through this stuff? Because apparently you can. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's what I was. That's what I was looking for. I don't know how many I need to kill, but I have a feeling as well the bodies stay around. You can just see them like spawning in from just just no, out of nowhere. They're all here as well. This is this is this is too much, man. What the hell am I looking at? <laughs> I really wish I could explore this place, but it's just so laggy. I actually want to see what happens if we fall. Let's let's see if... Uh, okay, I... The gravity must be insane. I think that's the fastest I've fallen out of a map. Jesus Christ, man. There are so many things wrong with this game that I don't even know where to start. Like the AK, for example. The audio seems to be on rapid fire, and it, trust me, it was much louder than you heard right there. Thank God for editing. The issue with the frame rate in this level is that for some reason, it starts off with what feels like 100 zombies and keeps adding to it. The issue with this is that I'm pretty sure the bodies don't even despawn. Like, I have no idea how you're meant to progress in this game if, uh, if my PC is about to blow up. Maybe that's the mega zombie explosion. My PC explodes and there you go there's your explosion i even tried turning on potato mode and here's a side-by-side -side comparison 
there is no difference. I think the only difference is pop in, but it doesn't really work for this map. In hindsight, what confuses me the most about this game is that it's meant to be some kind of survival. I mean, you can see your hunger and thirst here, but there are also these little buttons for, I guess, camping, which of course don't work. But just out of curiosity, I did give it another go just to see what happens if you run out of thirst. And hey, look at that. When it goes to minus one, you do actually take some damage. So uh, I guess it kind of works. Anyway, if you thought this level was bad, the next one, I don't know how, but the next one is much worse. I've got an RPG now, which is good. I'm looking forward to this because this is a part of the uh, zombie explosion, right? Yes, uh, they have exploded. For a game that goes on about explosion, by the way, what the hell is going on with the map? Wow, what's the fun if they just spawn in like that? Come on, this is this is so. What is why? Okay. Oh, man. Oh, screw it. I'm not even taking a gun. I just want to explore what the hell is going on. Like, the pop-in is insane. Can I just walk through it? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Very nice skybox. Uh, I feel like I'm playing Google Earth. Okay. Zombies will spawn in there. It's fine. I'm just going to sprint. I just watch everything pop in because... Are they... This is what optimization looks like. This is how you optimize a game, right? If you have everything pop in right in front of you. Well, there we go. I can't run anymore. Uh, then you should be fine. I want to see if I can make it to the top. I've got to be able to do some parkour, though. And I'm pretty sure I can do it from here. Why? I... <laughs> I don't really have any comments at this point. Let's just move on to the next game, which is a World of Barn, an RPG of all things. One thing I can give credit to is that there is at least some variation between these games. And you know what? This game seems all right, at least compared to the other two, which I found to be quite suspicious. Right, well, this, this game is called World of Barn. Apparently, I can make a character as well. So let's see what character creation looks like. Oh, look at that. Nice. Name. Wiz... Wizlet. There we go. Okay. Well, we've got a dialogue box. It's pretty damn cool. This must be a demo level. Just from some random RPG... Store asset or whatever. There's a fighter here. Hey, no time to lose. Go pick up a weapon. On that chest. Let's pick up a weapon on the chest. Oh. Okay, cool. Wow. Brilliant. Uh... I've got different spells. I've got, I've got ice. I've got wolf. I've got, got whatever that is. Uh, I probably have an inventory now. Wow! Look at that. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a I'm gonna use an axe. Yeah, screw! It, I'm a wizard. I'm gonna use a staff. There we go. Cool. You can do alchemy in this game. Don't know why. Uh, are there any quests set up here? You got a crafter. Get hides. Accept. Gather blue flowers, mine copper. Okay. Yeah, this game is actually quite decent. You've got uh, weapons, alchemy, these crafting quests, and uh, you can explore this little town full of the same person. Now, I've just got a quest from this guy to speak to somebody in another village, but while I make my way there, let's see what's really going on behind the scenes. You see, I checked the positive reviews and found out that this game was, surprise, surprise, made via the use of an RPG builder. And apparently, this one was made with Blink. I compared what I saw on the website versus this game and yeah it's spot on the best part about this is that blink doesn't require any coding it's just an editor that you use to make your very own unique rpg so i guess that's just something to keep in mind but moving forward i found the person we need to speak to and uh, got myself some clothes and also another quest but this time to kill some skeletons now apparently they're in some kind of coastal town so uh we're gonna have to explore to figure that out because uh the mini map in this game just doesn't work. But first, I wanted to check out this big castle. It seems like the kind of place where something might happen. But surely this is a place where I can find skeletons. It looks like a skeleton kind of place. A lot of lost frames around here, but I think the fire is struggling in this area as well. Yeah, I just found this uh, cool purple block. Oh! What? There's a... A dragon. Okay. Why why is there no sound as well? 
That has got a lot of HP. I'm not going to do anything about this. And the... Okay, well, there we go. There's a lot of crap over there. Okay, cool. We get to fight our first dragon or wyvern. I don't really care what it is. It's big. It's got a lot of health. It's stuck in this archway and took me about 15 minutes to kill it. Now, in these 15 minutes, not too much happened. But I did notice this down here, this blinking icon. It turns out, to no surprise, that this RPG builder comes with some kind of skill tree system. Just looking at it and based on what we've seen already, I'm pretty sure these are the basic skills that come with the whole template. Anyway, after finally killing this thing, we get ourselves some special weapons weapons, including this special staff, which is pretty cool and somehow made those 15 minutes worth the pain. There wasn't really much else to this castle. I couldn't really find any chests or anything of interest. I did see another town though through this gate, so of course I walked through it and uh, on the other side there are some skeletons. The same kind of skeletons that I need to kill for this quest. I've got to be honest here, my energy levels for uh, commentary were quite low at this point. Killing these skeletons wasn't anything special. I mean, to be fair, they are pretty cool. You've got two very variants. You've got these stabby ones and the uh, magical shooty ones. For some reason, they sink into the floor like this when they die and... The worst part about this quest is that not enough spawn at any given time. So while waiting for more skeletons to spawn, I checked out these rocks and uh, also found out that I could go underneath the castle. By doing so, I triggered another wyvern and this time it wasn't too hard to kill because I already leveled up and got some more skills. I've got to say, this RPG builder isn't too bad. I'd be really interested to play a proper game that was made with this builder. Anyway, when I killed this guy, I went back to the town and there we go, there are some more skeletons. Although, I need to kill four in total and I have to wait for them to respawn again. So I thought, screw it. I'm going to go off in that direction because it looks like the sea and uh, apparently this is meant to be a coastal village. So let's see how that pans out. Here we go. Here's the sea. Is there anything to the sea? I have a feeling this is not the sea. <laughs> I'm now in an icy tundra and I can see polar bears. How far does this go? It's not a polar bear, it's a bear, remember that. It's a big wide open space to explore, some mountains as well in the distance. And I think this is meant to be out, yeah, I think this is meant to be the end of the map. So uh, if that's the case, then surely I can't jump over it, right? Wow, are you kidding me? You can't be serious. You can literally walk under the mountains. And you can also run backwards. You could hear it in my voice. Uh, I was blown away by this. I've experienced quite a lot of out bounds in this series, let alone this video, but nothing quite like this. 33 pounds and you can run under the mountain because they didn't even bother to patch the terrain. At this point, I pretty much had enough and just jumped off the edge of the map. The best part about doing this is that when you save your game, your character will forever be falling. And if for whatever reason you want to explore this game further, you've got to make a new character. So I did that. I made a new character and this time, I wanted to explore the map a little bit more just to see if there was anything we missed, any villages or any kind of other terrain that would be cool and interesting. I can tell you right now that all I found were a couple more villages, nothing too interesting. I mean, it's just the same NPC, the same buildings and that's it. I also went to explore the icy tundra a bit more just to see if there was anything on the other side and I stumbled across a lake, a lake with what I assume to be the coastal village right next to it. Unfortunately, this lake has an invisible wall, so you can't really dive into the water and test out the water mechanics. I mean, that is until I found a gap within this invisible wall. And there you go. You can, in fact, go into the lake. And here's your AAA quality water mechanics. Before trying out the next game, I wanted to see what happens if you uh, die. Well, this is me dying in the game. I've just sunk into the floor. And I've respawned in the camp near the castle. Which, just by the way, I didn't even trigger any quests before. I was naked. I was running. I was scared. And after dying, I respawn here. So technically, this is a speedrunning strat. Anyway, there's one more game to look at. And you know what? I don't think you need me for this one. So I'm just going to pop to the shop, get some milk, and you guys can enjoy this very long, in-depth murder mystery called Murder of the Bear Lake. Apparently this is just version one. It was made in 2021. So uh, yeah, obviously no updates probably for a long time or ever. It does have some settings though. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Of course. Obviously, this simple menu is uh, its just a template that they've not even bothered to do anything with. Can I even play the game? Well, thank God I can play the game. No idea what this game is about. It's got the same issue as the first one where my cursor isn't locked in, but I guess if I... 
No, don't think there's anything I can do to fix this. I'm going to have to deal with this now. Oh, here we go. Hello, woman. Hello, woman. What are you doing in the forest at this time? I want to explore the forest. The forest is dangerous in the night. I can survive on my own. Okay, but I warned you. Yes, I know, but I go now. Bye. Bye. If I press escape, nothing. No. Any other buttons? Any other buttons? No. No jumping. No, nothing. It is another walking sim. What is going to happen? It's getting... It's very dark. Oh, look. We've just started off in this other little area. I think the lake is close. Cool. Lake must be this direction then. Brilliant. There's a drunk man. I, this guy dead? Okay, the man is sleeping. What? How simple is my character? Man, hey you. Oh. Oh, he said something. What are you doing here at this time? I am exploring the forest. Why the forest is dangerous. I know, but I still want to go. Okay, but I warned you. Bye. Bye. Very nice man. What a tree in the path. Maybe the man can help with this. I need help with something. What do you need? There is a tree in the path. I think there is an axe on the log. You can take it. Thank you. No problem. Bye. Bye. Eat a chop. Wow, I chopped with axe. Why can't I... Are you kidding me? I pressed E. Is there any way? Yeah, okay, cool. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I managed to make it out of bounds once again. Uh, there's probably no point going over there because it will just uh, lead to a pit of nothingness. Uh, so I'm just going to go this way and hopefully trigger a cutscene, which, you know, should have happened. Um, is, is this where I'm going to go? There we go. There we go. I actually had to get out of bounds to fix the problem. Finally, the lake. There is a campfire. I should go there. Yes, you should. Hello. What are you doing here? I am exploring. Okay, can you do something for me? What? I need mushrooms. I go grab some mushrooms for you. Thanks. Well, let me go grab some mushrooms. There's a cave here. Is this where I need to go? Can I go back? No. I guess I've just progressed. There is a camper. I should talk to him. Okay. Uh. Is it the same guy who needed mushrooms? Hello. Hello. You are the guy with the woman. Yes, but she went home. Oh, okay. I think I go home too. Okay, be careful. Bye. Bye. What, what is this game, man? What is this game? What is the dialogue? The dialogue, even the dialogue's broken. It's the same trees, by the way. It's, it's always been the same trees. These trees will haunt my dreams. Okay, let me guess. Uh, cool. Uh, Alright, I'm back here then. Hello. Hello. What happened to her? Some guy murdered her. I think I know who. Who? I found some guy on the near forest. He was with the woman. Thanks for the info. No problem. Bye. Bye. Or she died. Do I go this way now? Is this... Um, what, what happened? Wow, would you look at that? Unlike your dad, I actually came back. Yeah, this game is the icing on the cake. The peak of gaming, you might say. I actually had to play this twice just to see if this was in fact the ending. And yes, 
Yes, it was. There's no alternative ending. There's no secrets. There's there's no nothing. That is it. Five minutes of gameplay. At first, I thought these games were some kind of lame joke. Like, haha, it's so bad because it costs so much kind of thing. Because technically, you can play these games individually within the two-hour window and get a refund. But if you got this in a bundle, you'd need to be careful, of course, because if the playtime is over two hours, then you've just lost £6.60. But you see, I still couldn't really believe the price. So I had a look at Steam DB, checked out the price history, and as you can see right here for all four of these games, is that they used to be cheaper. But that's compared to the £33 or $50 price tag, which is obviously used as a way to bring down the price on a massive discount so people just out of curiosity will buy the game in the hope that they will forget about it and there you go, they make some money. But even on release, they're asking for way too much. When dumpster diving, I try to be as fair as possible. The difference with most games that I've covered in this series is that you can see that there's some kind of effort put into them. Granted, the execution may be poor at times, but these games were just made for the sake of it. No love and no care. I've had a look at other games made by this developer and they all seem to be the same kind of thing. Only these four are priced at this much. Anyway, that was it. We've set the bar so low now that the next game is going to look amazing next to these. Of course, a massive thanks to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys, you guys, you guys are pretty damn cool. And also, a massive thanks to my supporter on YouTube. Yes, that's right. I now stream here as well. And if you really want, you can get whizzed. But finally, a massive thanks to all my wicked slayers and cyber wizards. Gibbles by the dozen, time whiz. Nick Waller here, that was a Komodo dragon whiz. Also, yes, life happens, I forgot, oop. The Cuddly Bot, Camille B, Negadan, the one with severed toes, Rare Alex, Basto, Finra, Alex Capral, Lin Kerr, Mr. Pine, Spooky, Artistical, Roselle Bugatti, King Swing, Distant Reality, Legayana, Drago Funyun, Alex Nibs, Arcadius, Dr. Damo, Adam, Borky, Capitalist Moomin, Times Twice, Chris Blaga, Scotched Eggs, Big Ram, and Grimba. And I'll see you in the next one where I'll insert a fart noise with a lot of reverb.